I am now going to give an example of the Lefschetz fixed point theorem. Uh, example. So let's take x to be um, p1 over, say, some field c. Uh, c is going to be an algebraically closed field. And, um, and then we, we'll take f to be the map from, from p1 to p1. And it'll take x and it'll map to x plus 1. Okay, and this thing here is viewed on the affine piece. So uh, where x is equal to uh, x0 over x1. And then we have, uh, these are the projective coordinates here. So these are the coordinates for uh, projective space. Okay, so, so we have this map here. And, um, okay, so, so first, okay, we have to compute the left-hand side and the right-hand side, and I'm going to compare them and show that they're equal. Um, so it, it's all a matter of, we, we could do either one first. I'm just going to do the cohomology side first. Um, uh, okay, so let's do the cohomology side, and then, then I'll compute the fixed points. So, so the cohomology computation uh, of uh, P1. So... To do this, uh, well, well, this is this is going to be not so bad. Um, so we we know from uh, the the Poincaré duality that these two guys are going to be the same here, um, and we're just going to write them down as uh, uh, k here. So they're isomorphic to k. Uh, to fix a canonical isomorphism here, you need to we need to talk about gradings, and this is an H two two. Okay, so this is a 2. Uh, so this is actually k minus 1 if we're going to keep track of twists. And sometimes if we're doing like l adic at all cohomology, this will be ql. Okay, so we can find that they're the same. We know that the top one is, is going to be uh, k, and this has to do with the trace. So the bottom one has to match from Poincaré duality. Um, we also know the Euler characteristic of, of this, the topological Euler characteristic. So the topological Euler characteristic here, well, over the complex numbers, this is isomorphic to, to the, the points of it are isomorphic to uh, uh, the, the Riemann sphere. And we have uh, vertices minus edges plus faces is equal to 2 in this case. So, the, the, so um, and, and then the alternating sum of the dimensions of the, the cohomology, or the alternating sum of the Betty numbers, has to be equal to uh, the topological Euler characteristic. And uh, so that means this has to be 2. We already have 2 here, and we can't subtract anything. So that means that h1 of this has to be equal to 0. Okay, so we, we have computed the cohomology now. And, and now that we have the cohomology, we can compute the right-hand side of the formula. Uh, the right-hand side of the Lefschetz formula. Okay, it says that uh, the i0, 2, minus 1 here of the traces of, of this uh, operation on uh, the ith cohomology. So this is 1 minus 0 plus 1. And this is 2. OK, so we have, uh, we have what this has. And, and so by the theorem, uh, theorem uh, we expect, if the theorem is true, uh, the number of fixed points of f to be equal to 2. Um, okay, and, and so we're going to compute this. Um, let me talk about first how we're going to compute this. Um, so how do we compute this? So, so let me just kind of make a, a, a picture here of how this is going to be computed. So here's x, here's x. Okay, and then we have f. We have uh, some map f, and some map f is going to be something crazy. Okay, so this is this is f. This is the graph of f. Uh, the graph of f. And um, so to find the fixed points, we need to find points where they're they're it, they're it's not moved at all. And the points where are not moved at all are on the diagonal. So here, this is the diagonal. Uh, we call this the diagonal. And so these are the, just the points here, which look like uh, x x. And so the the fixed points here are are points like so. Okay, so they're the points which intersect. So these guys here are the fixed points. Uh, points. And so these are equal to where the graph intersects the diagonal. Okay. 
So we need to find where the graph intersects the diagonal. Um, all right, so let's uh, compute that. Okay, so first off, uh, remember that in affine coordinates, uh, we had the map. So in the affine chart, the standard affine chart, uh, uh, the x1 is not equal to 0. Uh, the map f was given by x maps to x plus 1. And so there's no fixed points here. Okay, so there's no fixed points here. So um, we need to look at it, the chart at infinity. Um, in projective coordinates, so, so to do the chart at infinity, uh, I'm going to write it in projective coordinates. So in projective coordinates, um, what do we have? Uh, so we have uh, x0, x1 goes to uh, x0 plus x1, uh, x1. So here uh, we, we divide by x1 and you can see that this is going to be 1 and then we get this form here. So in uh, the affine chart, uh, uh, x0 is not equal to 0. We divide by x0. So we get that um, uh, x1 over x0 maps to, well, x1 over x0 plus x1. And uh, if we let x be equal to um, uh, x1 over x0, then this thing just becomes uh, x maps to x over x plus 1. So we need to compute the fixed points of this map in the, in the, uh, in the chart at infinity. Essentially, well, okay, and we need to find the, essentially, so we need to find the fixed points of this map. Okay, or the, actually the multiplicity. So let me just say again uh, what our strategy is. We need, to, we need to compute the intersection here. And so we're going to compute the intersection multiplicity of, uh, of, of uh, gamma intersect um, uh, the diagonal at infinity. So we're going to compute an intersection number. Okay, so um, that, that's great. Uh, so we need to compute uh, the intersection multiplicity of, um, of the graph with the diagonal. Okay, so this is what we need to compute. And so this will be, we expect that this is going to be 2 from the previous computa computation, but we'll, sh we'll show this. Okay, so uh, how do we do this? Well, well, okay, so what is the graph of this map? So the map, lo again, looks like this, okay? So the graph is uh, the graph uh, at infinity, right, looks like uh, y is equal to x over x plus 1, okay, which is the same thing as, as uh, uh, y at x plus 1 minus x is equal to 0. That's what this map looks like at infinity. Uh, the diagonal here uh, at infinity, well, this thing just looks like y is equal to x, which is the same thing as uh, y minus x is equal to 0. And remember that this thing, was, th this thing is computed in terms of lengths. I've posted a video on this. Um, and it turns out that, uh, that the length so we'll, we'll have to compute what the coordinate ring looks like, but let's just see what these look like. So the, the computation involves taking um, these two functions here. So when we're doing curves, the intersection of curves on surfaces. So we have uh, y uh, x plus 1 minus x and y minus x here. And so it turns out that this is equal to c of, uh, well, we're just going to replace y with x. And uh, here... Uh, so this doesn't matter anymore, and we have uh, x times x plus 1 minus x. And so here when we distribute it out, we get an x squared, and then we get a plus x. So this is just really, oh, so this is c, not c. This is c, not the complex numbers necessarily. Uh, so this is equal to uh, c of x over at x squared. Okay, so this is what this, this is uh, what the, the ring looks like of the intersection uh, uh, the, the scheme theoretic intersection looks like um, the ring associated to the scheme theoretic intersection at infinity, and so um, I infinity of uh, gamma uh, this here, so this is equal to the length of uh, this ring C, just an algebraically closed field here, 
And this is this is just a equi characteristic thing, so this is two, as expected. So we we actually confirm that we so we 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 verified uh, the left shed's fixed point theorem. Uh, fixed point theorem in the baby most example. Okay, I'm going to stop here, um, and I'll be back, and I'm uh, going to finish the proof.